Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 16, 2015, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 237. I am your host, Ken Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday, where we learn to be better artists. And we are, in fact, going back in time because, yes, I do know, we did release 238 last week, and I misnumbered it. Thank you guys for noticing. But today is 237, and we are moving on with our armor designs. We're moving on with our armor designs from last week. And today what we're going to be focusing on is legs. We're going to be focusing on legs. There we go. There's the legs. Okay, we're going to be drawing armor on top of these legs and continuing from our lesson from last week. And that is designing armor. So if you want to go see that for yourself, go check out episode 236. 236, okay? But before we move on to Z's tutorial, we have to take a stroll down a very special place. And that is, of course, the lovely lane because you guys have been submitting your art and it's awesome. Thank you guys so much for creating your amazing work and not only liking the KNKL Facebook page, but submitting your art. If you'd like to get your art featured on this page and adored by thousands of people on YouTube, then just go over to YouTube, type in that tiny URL backed with the friendly Facebook blue, go like the page, submit your art, and come get some cookies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay. So yes, as I was saying, we're going to be talking about legs. Legs. Last week we talked about armor or like the torso and all that good stuff. But today what we're going to be doing is expanding on legs. And I'm going to be teaching you guys a couple things that I wanted to talk about last week, but I didn't get a chance to. Okay. So for this, we got our good old androgynous pair of legs. And let's go ahead and just kind of end our, our lesson ended last week with the like the end of the breastplate right which sometimes can come down like this i've noticed some like basically the end of the breastplate kind of comes down into like these skirt type of things two things that come down towards the edges i don't really know what the names of these things are but in most cases they usually end up with something kind of like that and then you can have all kinds of things like say like a tabard kind of coming down here or sometimes it's actually just open and then you just have like pants here and there. Okay, but that's not important because what we're focusing on today is leg armor, okay? So let's go ahead and get to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda dumb this down a little bit or rather lower the opacity. I'm dumbing down the lesson that way I can <laughs> hopefully, I like to simplify things. I like to make things as simple as possible for you guys. Not saying that my students are dumb, but I was dumb when I was learning about armor and I couldn't, really memorize all the names, like what the difference between a coutier and a gorget was. So instead I just said, hey, let's just figure out an easy way to remember all the shapes, all right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna draw from the profile first, okay? So the first piece of leg armor that comes down is gonna be the thigh guard, okay? So everybody knows that, good old thigh guard. But then this is where people start to get a little bit confused. They're like, okay, now I wanna have like a knee brace or a knee pad, so it's like this, but where does that connect? Does it like connect to the back of the knee? Does it overlap this part? Or, you know, how does it work exactly? And the way that I've found that it works most of the time most of the time uh, in like the older uh, medieval type of armors, what the knee pad would actually do is this piece would wrap around your leg, right? You'd probably have a couple straps, like one here and then the second one there. And then that would come right on down and then there would be a hinge right here. There would be a hinge allowing this knee pad to rotate, okay? Now that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. And it is a very important way to know how to do things because the knee pad will not only rotate, it's connected, um, to the thigh plate underneath, but it will also overlap your greaves, which is basically a fancy way of saying your ankle guards, okay? And those are gonna look like this, okay? So it's gonna look like that, it's gonna come down, and it's basically, again, another plate that sits over top, another plate that sits over top and guards your shin, and then you'll have like a rope there and a rope there. And basically, for those of you who, di who are joining us late, who are late to the class, the way that we are doing this is we're laying out the general shapes of the armor first. So you know kind of how to, uh, before you can start making crazy fantastical shapes and like all these crazy armor designs and like super minute details, first you gotta understand how it works, okay? So that's what we're doing. We're laying out 
the simple design so you know how everything works. Okay, so the same way that this part overlaps, right? It overlaps and then goes back down. Same thing is gonna happen here. Your ankle guard, or rather your greaves, I believe, uh, are going to overlap your sabatons. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're called, but uh, basically, yeah, just other, uh, like the scaled piece of metal that will cover your feet, okay? And there's all kinds of ways that you can do this, but probably the most common thing that you'll see is something kind of like this. And basically, you want to think of it as like there's a hinge there, a hinge there, a hinge there. That allows them to all move kind of independently on each other. And then you'll have like, say, um, like these would actually overlap the boot. The boot is still existing underneath. Right? So it's kind of like that. The metal plates just lay on top. You're not walking on metal. That would make it really slippery, obviously. Okay, so you got that good stuff that stays on top of your boot. And then sometimes what would happen is you would have like a, like a belt that would kind of fasten, fasten this kind of piece to your shoe. But in general, I mean, I'm actually not that big of a, a freaking professor on this stuff, so usually this is the most important part you just want to remember like overlapping going up going up basically it's like this okay so you have the point of the shoe then you have that then you have that that's laying on top of the boot like that you'll have like a, a belt here type thing and then you can have like another piece of metal back here that covers your heel your achilles heel you don't want anybody striking that and then you have your greaves which will again overlap that good stuff okay so you want to think about that overlapping this way and then this overlaps that it goes up to your shin all right ladies and gentlemen so with that in mind let's go ahead and take those simple shapes and now let's create something fantastical let's create our own custom work of art using our rules that we learned from last week okay what were they small medium large small medium large this is basically the shape language, or rather the rule that I'm always thinking about in my head for how I like to design things. A mixture of, or a perfect mixture of small designs, medium designs, and large designs. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and just keep this in mind. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into it. And jump right into it. Okay, so we got that. Let's go ahead and move these notes over move those good old notes over, and let's go ahead and make a new layer. Let's begin making some cool shapes here. Okay, so we know that we're gonna have, you know, belts here, right? And I'm going to keep in mind, um, I'm gonna keep in mind like diamond shapes. Diamond shapes and points. I really, really enjoy points and diamond shapes. Those are really, really fun. So let's say we wanna do something like this, okay? So we'll have it come to a point up here instead of you know that flat piece and then let's say that it kind of rounds around that way and then we'll have some designs that come right through here look i'm literally taking this this design and i'm bringing it right over here so you have that medium shape small shape and then you'll have this large shape right in here okay now for the uh the leg plate right let's make sure we have that hinge design right there have some room for that hinge and you don't have to always draw like, you don't always have to draw like the, the screw or whatever that's holding it, the rivet that actually holds it in. But in this case, I will. Let's go ahead and do that, right? Bring it down. Again, keep in mind that good old, good old design theory there, small, medium, large. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now we can bring this back. Let's say I wanna bring the shin guard way the heck back here and like have something like this. Maybe there's like a layer type thing that's happening in here. There's like two plates. There's two plates that happen right here, okay? And then you just separate that out. And another way, okay, so this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about last week. I wish I would have elaborated on this, but because we're an awesome ongoing show and we can add things, I'll show you guys another cool little thing that you can do when you're creating armor, okay? Now don't forget the belts that connect the back of that leg. That's what these things are, okay? You can have belts back there. And you can kind of, um, you can also draw in, sometimes I notice people like to do this thing where they'll draw in sort of like the buckles. Like you can draw in the buckles like that. 
like just kind of peeking out and then you can have the belts kind of sticking out like that. Sometimes that gives it another cool way to break the silhouette, right? Cool way to break the silhouette, okay? And then sometimes what I like to do, and this is what I'm talking about from last week. So another thing that I really like to do is I like to use the stylus, use the stylus, use the pen pressure to my advantage, and I'll go in and I'll actually start kind of like coloring things in. And this is all in the same layer, mind you. See, I haven't even created a new layer. I'm just going back in and I'm starting to kind of like shade things in. And one of the things that I really like to do with metal is I always like to think of the band uh, that's gonna be going through it, the band of light that will go straight through this piece of metal, okay? So it's like always in the center, it's like radiating outwards. This is something that will occur whenever you just have a cylindrical piece of metal and it is being lit by a front ambient light, which is basically how I like to light all my stuff uh, in concept work just makes it look really uh, clean, it's just really simple, and it's an easy rule to follow. So you don't have to worry about like crazy uh, lighting schemes and this and that. I always just do front lights. Easy, easy front lights. Okay, but back to the point. Back to the point. So you wanna think about that band that goes through the metal, right? And then you wanna paint lightly on either side of it, and then watch what happens. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so awesome. Wow, we are masters of painting metal just because we painted both sides of that, okay? So that was one of the things that I was talking about. So just working a little bit more with value, not being afraid to like add in value and then erase it away. So here's what I'm saying with that. Let's actually turn this a little bit darker so I can really prove this point. So I'm just going in here, turning these lights, uh, lines a little bit darker. And so another thing that I like to do, you guys hear me talk about line sculpting all the time, right? Line sculpting. So what I'll end up doing is say I'll paint in an area, I'll paint in an area like this and I'll make it nice and dark. And then I'll go back into that area and say, hey, maybe I want like a little bit of a trim here. Maybe I'll do something like this. Maybe I'll add in like a little design here so it looks something like that. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I really like that. I like that trim design. So then I'll take that, I'll take that design, which is basically like a thicker line and then like a thinner one on the inside. And I'll say, hey, you know what? I wanna replicate that right over here. Maybe we'll do it, uh, maybe this thin line can now become, um, you know, it's now the thin line and we can add these little details in like this, right? And again, I'm not worrying too much about making it perfect or this and that. Right now we're really just um, trying to just ideate on it, ideate on it. Okay, so we'll take that thicker line, draw that right through there. And then we have that thinner line that goes through there. And it has our little design on it, right? Don't worry too much about what it is. You're really just trying to find relationships, relationships, okay? And then soon enough, you'll be like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I do like that, that little, uh, maybe it's like a vine. Maybe it's like a vine with like flowers on it. I don't know, maybe this is like a, like a, like a princess armor, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but, but basically you want to keep that in mind. If you have a design that looks like this, like say if I were to invert this, it's a thicker line than a thinner line with like these little designs on it. You want to make sure that you're being consistent. Consistency is very important when you are designing your armors. So also, okay, so we can also put a little bit of that, a hint of that in the knee pad. Okay, so we can have something like that thin line, maybe there's like a little design here, and you can add stuff to it. You can maybe make the knee pad a little bit more ornate, you know, do something a little bit more like that, add it back in. Now you guys can see, huh? So now it's more so, like this is basically what I'm getting at here. It's like you erase and like add in almost like noise, and then later on you can go in and really start to figure out exactly what you want it to be. I feel like a lot of people try to, they try to figure out all of the, like they try to get into the nitty gritty too fast. They try to get into the nitty gritty too fast and they try to put in the details too fast. When really, when you're a concept artist, you're just supposed to find ideas, find relationships, and then um, start to kind of refine those. But too often I see people trying to make the, the finished product right from the beginning. And really that's not what you wanna be doing. You wanna be relaxed, you wanna be having fun, and you want to just get your ideas. It's almost like you just wanna barf out all of your ideas onto the page and then kind of work with it from there, okay? So let's kind of, I'm gonna replicate this shape because I really like this, like that, that fin that comes up like that. I'm gonna replicate that exact shape. 
Not like that. Bring a little bit of that in there. Maybe just a little more subtle. A little more subtle, since it is a smaller plate. You want to be careful about repeating things too much, too. You can repeat things too much. Sometimes it's nice to just have a plate that doesn't really have anything on it. Maybe it's just a nice, it's an area of rest. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I am talking about. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. We're going to add on some good old, uh, we're going to add on those sabaton. Sabaton. And let's go ahead and do something like this. Let's have them um, layered like this. And I'll have the toe actually be a little bit more. Ooh, ooh, I like this. I like that. So the toe will have this type of, will have that type of uh, shape. And we'll just kind of mirror that a little bit. It'll be like that. Love it. And I like to go back in and I almost like erase out my edges. You see what I'm doing there? I'm going back in and that could be a trim. That could be a trim or it could just be the edge. It could be the edge of the metal. And then sometimes if I want to add that, see that highlight, I can just go back in there and erase it out. Okay. So there we go. All right. I like it. So yeah, just play around with your shapes, play around with your armors, do all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and take this and we'll translate it quickly to the front. And then we're gonna call it good, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna call it good. I'm gonna set you free. I'm gonna set you free to go create your own awesome fantasy armors. And you're gonna have tons of fun. All right, so um, the way that I would translate this to the front is, so we have this knee pad, basically. Looks like this from the side, right? Well, if we tilt that to the front, it's obviously going to be symmetrical. So we're gonna have something more like this, okay? You wanna keep in mind that hinge. The hinge is right there, same place where your knee bends. Okay, so we'll have something like that. This thigh guard is gonna come up like that. And we're not gonna worry so much about the, because obviously these two plates would be intersecting with each other, like if this, uh, if there was a um, chest piece that had these skirts coming down, obviously these two pieces of metal would be banging together. So you wanna stay away from this. Stay away from this. Make sure you think about how the metal pieces will move when your character is fighting dragons or saving princesses. You gotta make sure that it is functional, form and function. So in this case, we'll say that this chest piece maybe goes up like this, right? Maybe it cuts up like this, and then that gives us plenty of room for our thigh guards to come up that high. See what I'm talking about? Mm. Love it. All right, so we got these fins coming up like that. And then we got this overlapping piece right there. Let's go ahead and put in that line that I talked to you guys about, that awesome line that just goes right up through the middle of the metal. And again, this is just very, very quick throwing this together so you guys can see my process on this stuff. Let's go ahead and erase out these designs. Erase out and add these designs in. And there you go. Voila, you have boots. Okay, I'm actually gonna darken this in a little bit because we need a little bit more, uh, we need a little bit more contrast on that. And speaking of contrast, that reminds me of another thing that I wanted to teach you guys. Okay, so I'm just adding that in. So here's a good example, and, and we're going to uh, review this entire thing. We're gonna review our rules right now because I just did something that's very important. Okay, so let us review. Not only do you want to have relationships of new layer, not only do you wanna have relationships of Let's take a look at this thigh guard of small, medium, and larges in your thigh guard. See, here's our medium right here. Small is right there, and there's our good old large, okay? But also you wanna think about areas of detail and rest. So the same thing is happening here. Notice how there's all this detail happening in the knee guard, 
okay? So you got all these squiggles and noise happening in here. What you don't wanna do is then have a lot of squiggles and noise happening in the thigh guard right next to it because then you'll lose a lot of the clarity. So a good way to do it is if you want to, what I've demonstrated here is if you're gonna have a lot of design in this area, make sure you contrast it with areas of rest, areas of detail and areas of rest. And a good example of this is uh, look at like Gundam Wing or any sort of like Japanese mech art. The way that they design their mechs is a perfect example of this. If you want to uh, see art masters who have already done it really well. I look at that stuff all the time because they have these really big metal plates, like say for the shoulders, but then they'll have like little openings and stuff where you'll see all these little intricate designs and like smaller shapes, smaller shapes, mixing big shapes with small shapes. Same thing that's happening over here. It is the master, the master rule, one of them, you know, it's one of them, but it just works so dang good. So I wanted to make sure that I taught you guys that. All right. So the last thing I want to touch on before we end today is I want to teach you guys one more thing. One more thing that I think will really help you out. And that is when you're working with values like this, notice how I'm not working with straight black because straight black can be really hard on the eyes and it's like, oh, it's just there's too much contrast between the background and what you're working on. So I like to lighten my stuff up a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to see things, see things within the sketch lines, okay? So there's uh, number one. Number two is I like to use a, not a straight white background, again, for less contrast with your sketches, uh, but also here's where it comes in handy. If you'd like to, you can grab white, straight white. You can create a new layer or you can paint it on the same layer. I would recommend doing it on a new layer though. And you can actually start to add white back into this stuff. So um, you can do stuff like highlights, like hotter highlights that go through the armor, or maybe the character has like some sort of, like uh, this is just for a good example, maybe there's like lights or something. Maybe it's like a, a furnace, some sort of like Xerath molten furnace character, you know? <laughs> or they have like the slits in the armor, right? And then the fire and light just like spills out, right? See how now you have a new uh, l layer and a new range of values to play with. You can also create lights in the armor. Right? If we wanted to just light this up like a Christmas tree, we could just do this and like have glowy things, right? So you can now use white to create new uh, values and just uh, kind of add on, add more depth to your concept drawings. And that goes for designing armor, goes for designing creatures and all that good stuff. I personally love to do this. Like when I'm just working in the basic early stages, I love to do, I start with gray. I start with a nice gray background or a medium gray background. Work with like a slightly darker gray. And then I'll go in and I'll add a little bit of white to it. Makes it really, makes it really pop. And then when you show the concept, it feels very balanced. It feels very balanced and it looks a lot cooler than it would if it was just, you know, you didn't have any white and you had black lines here and then you had a white background. You see how that's like, so much more like hard on the eyes and it's like oh like and then you just go to as opposed to this right that versus this much more interesting to look at so i want to leave you guys with that i hope that helps you out before we do do our sign off i want to say thank you guys for being understanding that i cannot be with you live on twitch for the next week but i will be returning to my place of residence this weekend can't guarantee that I'll be doing a Thoughtful Thursday. I will try my best, but at any rate, I will be back home this weekend and we'll be resuming the show as normal next Tuesday, Thursday, all that good stuff. Um, before we actually do head out, I want to say thank you to my sponsors, my awesome sponsors, Mitchell Tomers, David Cariello, and Laura Bashir. These people are awesome. They are my sponsors on Patreon. They keep the lights running at night and they got these awesome uh, animated avatars right <laughs> super awesome animated avatars and if you too would like to sponsor the show or contribute in any way just head on over to patreon.com you can click that little link in the bottom right if you'd like to go you can get psds you can sponsor the show get cool stuff i'll let you guys go over there and check it out for yourself but until next time you guys take care and i will see you very soon hopefully thursday 
If not, then I, I can at least put something small together. I can put together a quick Thoughtful Thursday for, for tomorrow or something. <coughs> I'm going to let you guys go before I die. <coughs> uh, but thank you, and I will see you guys soon.